All right, guys, in this video, we will create an SAP Fiori app based on an OData 4 service that we created in the video. Let's code ABAP with the RESTful application programming model. We will customize this YouTube tutorials app to automatically load the data from the database and to display it in the UI once the app is launched. And then we will deploy the app to the ABAP environment in SAP BTP and create an identity access management app and a business catalog for it. So the tools we are going to use in this video are BAS, the Business Application Studio from SAP. If you're not familiar with setting up BAS, please watch my previous video, Setting up SAP Business Application Studio. And Eclipse. If you're not familiar with setting up Eclipse, please watch my video, Eclipse for ABAP developers. So if you like this content, please consider giving a like and subscribe so you guys can keep up to date with all of our videos. Now without further ado, let's get to it! Okay, here I am already in my SAP Business Application Studio and I open my dev space by clicking on the name of the dev space here. This opens my dev space and my workspace that I've created in the last video. Now I log into Cloud Foundry by pressing the hamburger symbol here on the left hand side. And then I choose View Command Palette. Here I enter CF for Cloud Foundry and I choose Login to Cloud Foundry. Here I create a SSO passcode by clicking on this link here. And then I enter the passcode here and I click sign in. Now I can select my Cloud Foundry organization and my Cloud Foundry space. And then I hit apply. Now I can check if I have access to my ABAP environment as well by clicking on Cloud Foundry here on the left hand side. And here under services I can see my ABAP dev environment. Now I can create a new project directly from the get started page here. Or I click on the hamburger menu here on the left hand side again and I choose view command palette. And here I choose Fiori open application generator. This opens the template wizard where I can choose between different templates for my app. In our case, we click on the list report page here since we want to generate the same UI that we had in our ABAP app in the Eclipse preview. And then we hit next here on the bottom of the page. Now we can choose a data source here and we, we choose connect to a system. And here under system, we choose up environment on SAP business technology platform. And here we actually can choose our ABAP environment. And now we can select our OData4 service of our YouTube videos. Then we hit next here on the bottom of the page. Here we choose our main entity, which is our video entity here. Then we hit next again. As a module name, I enter that video. As application title, I enter my Fiori video app. Since we want to deploy this app, we choose yes here under add deployment configuration. And we also choose yes for add Fiori Launchpad configuration. Then we hit next again. Since we want to deploy our app to the ABAP environment, we choose ABAP here as target and we do not choose Cloud Foundry. Here we choose the destination to which we want to deploy our app. This destination for our ABAP environment was automatically generated when we connected to our Cloud Foundry environment here. Next, we need to enter a unique name for our application, for a deployed application here. I name it that video as well. How do you want to enter the package? Here we choose enter manually and on the package, we enter the name of our package in Eclipse, which was that video as well. How do you want to enter the transport request? We choose manually here as well. 
And here we need to enter our transport request from Eclipse. So for this purpose, we open Eclipse and we connect to our ABAP project. Then we look for our Z video package here and we open it. Then we click on transport organizer here. We click on the transport request here. And underneath the modifiable folder here, we find our transport request. Now we switch back to the business application studio and we enter the transport request here. And then we hit next. Next, we have to enter the Fiori launchpad configuration. The semantic object I named that video. Since the app can update the data, I choose maintain as action. And the title is my video app. And then I hit finish. Once the Fiori app is generated, we can see the application information here. Here at the bottom of the page, you now have several options what you can do with the application. For example, preview the application. We will preview the application. However, we will do this with the integrated terminal. So we click on the project explorer here on the left hand side. Here you can see that set video directory of our app. We right click on this directory and we click open in integrated terminal. This opens the integrated terminal here and we can enter npm start and then we hit enter. npm stands for node package manager which basically starts a local node server here and you can find the node package configuration here in the package.json file. Here on the scripts are basically all the commands that are available for you. You can run them with npm run and then the name of the script. So for example, if you want to deploy the app, we would run npm run deploy. But first let's open this local app here that was created for us. We can open it by clicking control and then we click on this URL. This opens a new browser window where we can see the files and directories of this app and we click on index.html and this opens the UI of our Fiori app. However, as you can see here, the data is not loaded automatically. So we have to click on go here on the right hand side first. And then we see the data, but we want to have this data loaded automatically. So how can we do this? So first we close this browser window again. Then we stop the server by pressing Ctrl C and we switch back to our application info tab here and we find the open guided development tile here. So we either can click on it here or we open the command palette again with Ctrl Shift and P, which is the same like clicking on the hamburger symbol view command palette. And here we can look for Fiori guided development. We click on it and this opens the guided development here as well. Here in the list report page section, we can scroll down and we can find the configure auto load for a table here. We click on it. Then we choose set the initial load property for the list report here. And here we change the initial load mode from auto to enabled. If you scroll down, we can see the snippet that is generated for us. It is basically this JSON entry here that sets the initial load to enabled. And if you click on insert snippet here, this JSON entry is added to the file zc underscore video list.json. So we click on insert snippet. And now we can see the changed video list.json file here on the right hand side. Please note that this also opened the SAP Fiori application modeler here on the left hand side, where you can make further changes to all pages of your application. But now let's try to run the application again. We enter npm start in the terminal again and hit, we hit enter. We open the app again. We open the index.html file. And now we can see that the data is loaded automatically. Now let's close everything again.
And now let's deploy the app. As already mentioned before, we can do this with running npm run deploy. And then we hit enter. Here we check that all information is correct. And then we hit Y. After a few seconds, we can see that the SAP UR5 application has been uploaded and registered successfully and the deployment was successful. It also provided us a URL for our app. We can press Ctrl and click on it. This opens a new browser window. However, we can see an error. 403 forbidden. So we first need to create an identity access management application and a business catalog for it. For this purpose, we switch back to our Eclipse development environment. First, we open our Z video package here and we check if a um, business server page has been created here in the BSP library. Yes, here it is. And we also check if a Fiori launchpad Fiori Launchpad descriptor item has been generated. And it is here as well. So everything is fine and we can continue with creating the identity access management application here in Eclipse. For this purpose, we right click on our Z video package here and we choose new other ABAP repository object. Here we search for IAM and we choose IAM, which stands for Identity and Access Management App. And then we hit Next. Here we enter a name, set video IAM, for example. The description is IAM App, for example. And the application type is External App. Then we hit Next. We accept the existing transport request and then we hit finish. This automatically adds the ext suffix here to my app name. Now I can click on the services tab here in the middle and I can add a new service here by clicking on this symbol here. As service type I choose odata4 and for the service name, I click on Browse here and I choose my Video OData 4 service. And then I hit OK. Now I can find my Identity Access Management application here in Cloud Identity and Access Management. And here it is located under IAM Apps. Next, I need to create a business catalog. I can do this by clicking on my video package here. Then I choose new and other other repository object. Here I enter business catalog and I choose the business catalog and then I hit next. As a name I enter Z video PC and in the description I add business catalog and then I hit next. Here I choose my transport request and then I hit finish. Once my business catalog is created, I select the apps tab here in the middle. And here I can add a new app by clicking on add here. Here in my IAM app, I browse for my identity access management application. And then I click next. Again, I accept the transport request and I hit finish. This created this business catalog assignment. Then I switch back to my business catalog here. And in order to publish my business catalog, I click on publish locally here right above my head. Once the business catalog is uh, published successfully, I can switch back to my business application studio. And here I can deploy my changes by running npm run deploy again. Here I hit Y again. And here I can see that the deployment was successful. Once again, I click on this deployed and provided URL here. 
And now my app is publicly available here and the data is loaded automatically. So that's all for today. If you like this content, please click the like button, the subscribe button, and also the notification bell below. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.